What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today's video will be about Chrome extensions. Now, if you have not analyzed a Chrome extension before and you want to learn how a Chrome extension works, what is the structure of a Chrome extension and how to detect malicious indicators in a Chrome extension, this video is for you. We will be analyzing a Chrome extension. Specifically, the scenario is taken from uh, Cyber Defenders, which is a platform for practicing your blue team and SOC analyst skills. The challenge name is Fake GPT. And after analyzing the Chrome extension, we will be answering the questions. So this is also a walkthrough for a Cyber Defender challenge. Let's get started. Before we start the analysis, let's first talk about the components of the Chrome extension. A Chrome extension consists of the following components, the most important of which is the manifest. So when analyzing a Chrome extension, you want first to take a look at the manifest uh, component because it contains all the permissions. Uh, that the extension has access to, such as the URLs, the opt-apps, the cookies. You will find all of these in the permissions, host permissions and content scripts. So the host permissions, uh, actually, these are interactions with the specific domains. They include if the extension has access uh, to uh, interactions performed while talking to specific domains. And also content scripts. So that's number one. Next, I would look into the background scripts. Background scripts are responsible for managing the event handling and browser monitoring. So what does that mean? It means if a malicious extension is installed in your browser, the background scripts component of that malicious extension uh, can be exploited to track user activity or to send data to remote servers. So tracking user activity and sending that to remote servers can be done by using events and browser monitoring. Okay, the third aspect here is the content scripts. So these can be injected into web pages to interact with what is called as the DOM, uh, which is actually a common vector for page manipulation and data theft. The fourth component here is the pop-up scripts. So the pop-up scripts handle the extension's uh, user interface. It can The user interface can contain malicious actions or it can mislead users and redirect them to uh, other destinations. Uh, four or five, we have the web accessible resources. These include files accessible by web pages that can potentially deliver malicious payloads or expose sensitive data. And lastly, we have the external resources. This, include, this includes URLs or scripts that are loaded externally. These uh, URLs or scripts can point to malicious domains or may contain obfuscated content. So now, these are the components of a Chrome extension. Now it's time to practically analyze a malicious Chrome extension. Okay, so the fake GBT lab scenario states that the employees of an organization have downloaded a browser extension and right after downloading the extension, weird things start to happen such as accounts were being compromised and sensitive information appeared to be leaking. So here we want to analyze the Chrome extension. We can click on download, provide the password, and you'll be able to download the zip file. Now, analyzing a Chrome extension could be done several ways. One of the methods is to use an online viewer. The CRX viewer is an online viewer that allows you to extract and view uh, the extensions. So basically you can uh, upload the extension here. After the upload is complete, we can see the files that have been extracted. Now when analyzing a Chrome extension, it's worth mentioning that the main important file here is the manifest. So basically, the manifest is the core configuration file that specifies the metadata, the permissions, and the behavior of the extension. We're going to analyze the manifest in a while. Next, we have the background scripts. So you see the app, crypto, loader. These are all called background scripts. They manage the event handling and perform the browser monitoring. Attackers often exploit these scripts and they embed them with malicious code, basically to track user activity or send the data to uh, remote servers. Um, uh, and lastly, we have the, this HTML file, and this is it. Okay, so if you start the analysis first, we're going to start with the manifest. So first we have metadata information about the uh, extension, the name, the version, the description, and then we have the permissions. Okay, so we have tabs, HTTP, HTTPS. So basically, this is a broad access to all the web pages of the user, the browser tabs, and of course, the cookies. And we have also privileges to access web requests and web request blocking. This allows the extension to intercept and modify the network traffic uh, passed through the browser. Okay, which could also redirect user or allow the extension to has the to, uh, to the ability to 
uh, redirect users or inject malicious scripts. And lastly, we have the permission to access the storage. It allows the extension to save data. Or if the extension exfiltrates data, the privileges to access the storage allows the extension to save this data locally. Um, let's have a look at the loader. We have worth looking here at the loader extension or the loader script. So this is a persistent script, as you can see. And from the look of this, we can see that it runs continuously. And this allows the script to uh, perform real-time monitoring, exfiltrate data, and possibly communicate with the C2 server. Now, if we look at the app script, we can see that the app script listens uh, for the for the form events. So basically, it grabs the username and password, any username or password that are submitted online. It grabs the username and password. And also, here we have a keystroke. So basically, um, it also listens on the keystrokes typed by the user. All this is done by interacting with the DOM to read all these sensitive data, username, the password, the keystrokes. And it sends them basically after the performing the encoding and encryption, it sends them to a remote location via send to server function. And that's basically the URL. So this is an exfiltration script. It exfiltrates username, password, and keystrokes. Crypto. Here, the crypto script is part of the app.js to send the exfiltrated data in an encrypted format. And lastly, we have this GIF, and we have the UI HTML. It's basically the UI provides a seemingly or innocuous looking or innocuous uh, uh, interface for the user. That's basically the UI. From the look of this, this is a fake extension designed to steal user data, namely the username or usernames and passwords submitted, the keystrokes, um, and other sensitive information. So that's basically how the script works. Okay, now let's go back and have a look at the questions. The first question, which encoding method does the browser extension use to obscure target URLs, making them more difficult to detect during analysis? Uh, basically, we want to find out what is the uh, obfuscation technique or the encoding type used to uh, conceal the URLs, basically the C2 URL or maybe the exfiltrated URLs. If you go back to the app here, the app script, we can see we have uh, this function, 5FA1. It contains BTOA, which is a method to encode text or data and convert it into base64. And also, we have an array here named targets, defined as a constant, and it contains a base64 encoded value. Now, this if we use cyberchef from base64, we see it converts into facebook.com. And then the function here is called several times throughout to uh, convert the data exfiltrated into base64. So we confirm that the encoding method used to conceal the data is base64, judging by this and this. So here the answer is base64. Okay, next question, which website uh, does the extension monitor for data theft, targeting user accounts to steal sensitive information? So here <clears throat> the question is asking, what is the website that the extension targets and aims for data theft? So here we see the extension trying to gather a username and password, but what is the website that it monitors, right? Now here we can see this, or we can find this by uh, looking at the if statement here. In the if statement, we have a comparison between the window location host name with the targets array. We saw that the targets array includes a base64 value, which decodes into Facebook. So basically, the extension compares the opened site with the uh, with Facebook. If they are equal, it's going to activate this routine. This routine captures the username and the password, and of course, add the listener to capture keystrokes. So the website monitors is facebook.com. Third question we have, which type of HTML element is utilized by the extension to send stolen data? Okay, if you go back here, we knew from before that the extension, after it uh, monitors and steals the typed or the captured username, password, and other keystrokes, the uh, script calls the function exfiltrate credentials. Okay, this function is going to call the send to server and passes the encrypted payload as an argument. The encrypted payload here, as you can see, guys, it is uh, the data that was exfiltrated after the encryption is done using this function. So after encrypting the exfiltrated data, it calls the send to server, which passes the encrypted data in the encrypted payload uh, variable. Then we have send to server. The send to server takes the encrypted data and then 
it exfiltrates the encrypted data using the image tag to avoid any detection by security solutions or security monitoring tools. Because usually attackers use fetch or XML HTTP request to exfiltrate the data or to perform calls to suspicious URLs. This time, the uh, extension used the image tag because it is regularly and usually used uh, without any problems. That's why here we the, the attackers can bypass security monitoring tools using the image tag. Now here it used the image source and it points to this URL and the data parameter takes the encrypted payload as a value. So that's how the, uh, the, the data, the exfiltrated data is passed to the C2 server using the image tag. So back to the question, which type of HTML element? It is the image. Question four, what is the first specific condition in the code that triggers the extension to deactivate itself? So the extension performs self deactivation tactic, maybe to avoid uh, detection. So it's an anti-analysis technique, similar to anti-analysis techniques used by malware to avoid being detected in virtualized environments. So basically, if the condition is satisfied, the script won't run. It's going to self deactivate, similar to a malware not running or performing sleep cycles uh, in a virtualized environment to avoid detection. So here we go to the app.js. We just analyzed this. Let's go to loader. And in the loader, here we have this comment. Check if the browser is in a virtual environment. We have this if statement or the condition. If navigator plugins length equal to zero, if the browser doesn't have plugins maybe, and if navigator user agent equals to headless Chrome, which indicates a virtualized environment or a browser running in a virtualized environment. If one of these conditions is either true, it's going to alert the user and sense and send this pop-up virtualized or virtual environment detected extension will disable itself the question here is what is the first specific condition in the code the first specific condition is this that's the first one and if you ask what the second one is the second one so one checks on the plugins and other one checks on the user agent okay question five which event does the extension capture to track user input submitted through forms so we go back now to app and we see the extension captures the username password keystrokes through the uh, let's see here the submit so it uses the add or document dot add event listener to capture the submit event okay and then it uses the form data to capture the username and password or to store the username and password and then it sends them using the exfiltrate data to the remote server so back here which event it is the submit event Question six, which API or method does the extension use to capture and monitor user keystrokes? So we're still in the app script here. If you scroll down, we can see the document.add event listener key down. So this is the uh, method used to monitor the keystrokes in real time. And then uh, the data or the keystrokes are formatted in order to be sent using the exfiltrate data, which takes keystrokes or keystroke and key. So that's the method used to uh, record the keystrokes. So which API or method does the extension use to capture a monitor the keystrokes? It is the uh, key down. Question seven, what is the domain name where the extension transmits the exfiltrated data? We already saw this here in the send to server function. Here, we're gonna repeat again that the uh, extension sends the exfiltrated data through the image object. So using the image object here, a new image was created and then the uh, the encoded data or the encoded exfiltrated data was appended to the URL as a query parameter, which is data. And then the final result, it was sent through the uh, document body. So the HTML, in the body of the HTML, the request to the image here will be uh, made to uh, as, a, as a get request to the URL here, including the, the uh, exfiltrated data. So which what is the domain name? This is the domain name. I get this is a subdomain. Question eight, which function in the code is used to exfiltrate user credentials, including the username and password? So we go back to the very beginning. So here, uh, the username and password were captured and then through the, uh, through the uh, add event listener submit, the keystrokes were captured as well using the add event listener key down. And then the exfiltrate credentials function is called with username and password as uh, arguments the payload variable is defined to include the exfiltrated username, password, and the website that was opened at the time of the exfiltration. And then we have another 
uh, variable defined, which is constant encrypted payload. This calls the encrypt payload function here to encrypt the payload. The payload here includes the username, password, and window location hostname or the website open. So what is the website? What is the function used to encrypt the uh, payload or encrypt the exfiltrated data? It is encrypt payload. What's the function used to exfiltrate the data? It is exfiltrate credentials. The question is asking about the function used to exfiltrate user credentials. So it is exfiltrate credentials. Which encryption algorithm is applied to secure the data before sending? To find the encryption algorithm, we're going to have to take a look at the function responsible for encrypting the payload, which is encrypt payload. The function is here, function encrypt payload, the argument is the data or the exfiltrated data. We have a key defined here. This is the encryption key. This is the initialization vector, and that's the encrypted, the final encrypted payload. It uses the AES algorithm. Okay, and lastly we have, what does the extension access to store and manipulate session related data and authentication information? Here, we want to find out what is the uh, variable or the attribute that the extension uses to access session related data. So this relates to the permissions. We're going to have to go back to manifest and have a look at the permissions. So among the permissions, the, the attribute here that allows access to session related data is the cookies. And this was it. So we're going to write this as, uh, I think it is um, easy. And uh, it is five star ratings. There were no problems in the challenge. It went smoothly.